Greetings, people. This is Paul at Greenshire Homestead. Uh, I was asked to do a video on septic systems. And uh, what we've got here is uh, there's a thousand gallon tank underneath the ground here where these two pipes are. Um, we'll pipe at each end of it. And what happens with the septic system is uh, just like in any town, you got a four inch line that comes out of your house. All your toilets, your showers, your sinks, everything uh, goes through various pipes in your in your house and meets up at a four inch line and then that four inch line runs down here in our case instead of going to a sewer system it goes to our septic system so this thousand gallon tank it, in our case also is plastic you can get concrete but um, the all the sewage goes in here and then the the solid waste then falls to the bottom and uh, as the tank once the tank fills up with a thousand gallons worth of material uh, the water, you know, the, the liquid then starts to run off the top. There's an outlet on the top of the tank, and in our case, it runs then to a lagoon. What a, la, the lagoon is, is um, basically a small pond. The, the same guy that set the tank, dug the lagoon, um, it's going to run you somewhere in the vicinity of $3,000. Well, we've been here four years. It was about $3,000 tanks have probably gone up since then and probably so is the cost of dirt work but uh, he was here about 11 hours he he trenched the uh, the tunnel for the line for the uh, four inch line and then dug the hole for the tank he brought the tank set the tank then he dug the line over to the lagoon he dug the lagoon and uh, that took him about 11 it was roughly 11 hours and it, he charged me three grand uh, he's a guy I know so he might have given me a little break there I'm not sure but um, with a lagoon, a lot of people don't like the idea of having a lagoon. They're not the prettiest thing, um, depending on you know how you set it up. Ours is behind a shop and behind a hill. You can't see it from the house. So if I could, I'd keep it more trimmed up than I do. And at some point here, I will go down there and trim it up and, and make it look a little nicer. Um, but the, of course, having a body of still water lends itself to mosquitoes. I hate mosquitoes, so I use these, uh, they're called mosquito dunks. You get six of these, you put one of them in your uh, pond, your lagoon, once a month, and for a whole month this will um, eliminate the mosquitoes. What it does is it kills the larvae. This won't hurt the frogs. I've got all kinds of frogs in there. You'll be able to hear those when I take the camera down there to show you the lagoon, but uh, um, this won't hurt any any animals or frogs or anything like that. It just kills the mosquito larvae. So uh, and they work really really well. <clears throat> the other issue would would be your dog. Uh, if you have a Labrador or a dog that likes to get in the water, you don't want them getting in the, the lagoon. So our this pit bull that we have that you see running around from time to time doesn't ever, has never tried to get in there. So um, I'm going to be taking all the the fencing down and then that's when I'm gonna go ahead and clean it up but what I had our last dog did like to get in there so I set some teeth posts and then I ran an electric wire around there and hooked that up to a solar fence charger and uh, once he hit that electric wire the shock you know he dogs don't like to get shocked and uh, once he got shocked he never went back near it again I, I need to bring that fence charger in it's gonna ruin the battery sitting out there but um, the uh, I don't even need to keep that charged once the dog hits it as long as you leave the wire up um, he won't go back near it most most dogs won't uh, so <clears throat> keeping your dog out is easy with the electric wire and then uh, keeping the mosquitoes out with the dunkers um, the, the reason I like the lagoon is I can see what's going on with it I, I know what's happening you know underground I know what's happening here in the lagoon and and as long as that lagoon looks right I know everything's working properly the other type of system would be a, um, a leach field and a leach field if we had a leach field it would be down over here and what would happen then same exact principle the water would, you know all the sewage would come into the tank and then instead of the tank draining into a lagoon it would drain into the leach field so there would be a a single uh, four inch line running down this hill and then it would it would then branch into four lines so it'd be kind of like a big fork and the four uh, pipes that would run off of that main pipe 
would be perforated. So as all the, the, the liquid waste went down there and filled into those four pipes, they, they would then, the water would leach out of those pipes into the uh, surrounding soil. That's why they call it a leach field. Before you can put in a leach field, they do have to do what's called a perk test. And uh, they'll dig a hole, and a given size hole, and then they'll fill it with a given size amount of water. And then they see how long it takes for that water to um, disperse into the surrounding soil. And that tells you whether or not you can have a leach field. Like if you have soil with a heavy clay content, you won't be able to have a leach field because it the, 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 the water can't leach out into the surrounding area quickly enough for you to have a, a viable septic system. So um, that brings up another thing. You, you do need to have a downhill run, obviously. Your house can't be higher or, or lower than your septic system because water's not going to run uphill. If you have a situation where you can't, you know, it, 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 the, the location, the topography of your, your your land just doesn't dictate the fact that you can get a downhill run from your house to your septic tank and then from your septic tank to either your lagoon or your leach field. They do have pumps. I can't speak on that though because we've never had that situation. The four houses that we built have always been higher than the septic tank and then the lagoon has always been lower than the, sep the, the uh, septic tank. So, uh, and in all, in all four places we always had a lagoon. I've I've never had a problem with the lagoon, and I don't know of anybody that ever has had a problem with the lagoon. But I do know people that have had problems with the leach field. That's why I don't like a leach field, because you can't see what's going on. That's why people like leach fields, because you can't see it. So it's more aesthetically pleasing. Um, but if something were to, you know, it sounds disgusting, but if some solid waste were to make its way into those pipes and, and plug them up, one pipe or two, or just some kind of issue took place down there where the water wasn't able to either make it to a pipe or uh, to an entire pipe, or it wasn't able to um, efficiently um, leach out into the surrounding soil, it's eventually going to start backing up. And when it starts backing up, you're not going to know until you start having a problem up at the house or, or um, you know, here at the tank. It, you know. It, these uh, pipes, the, the cap comes off, and you know you could have some sewage start leaking out of there. These caps really fit tight, though, so I don't think that would happen. You're going to figure it out when it starts coming up through the floor drain in your basement. That's what happened to the people I know. Um, so that is why I prefer to have a lagoon. I can see that there's not a problem. I can't see that. And the, the other thing too is if you did have a problem with a leach field, somebody's got to come out and they're going to have to dig all that up and you're going to have to either clear out the pipes or you're going to have to replace the pipes and then you're going to have to backfill again and then you're going to have to put down either sod or new grass seed. I mean it's a whole big thing uh, and I, I, I just don't want to deal with that. You know, That's why I choose to use a lagoon. Basically it's the same principle. But with the lagoon also, you don't want to have a lot of trees around it, and you don't want to have a lot of vegetation uh, around it because lagoons are designed to evaporate. That's what they do. Um, you know, once the water's in there, the surrounding soil reaches its maximum um, absorption, and just like any pond, uh, the the water, you know, once the the water around the pond has reached its maximum absorption, the water just sits there. So the sunlight and the wind is what causes that to then evaporate. So you gotta gotta keep a clear area around your um, lagoon. That is important. Um, the uh, uh, for the maintenance on it, that's what these pipes are for. Um, you can call. They they have um, septic companies. When you live in rural areas, there sec there are septic companies, and they drive these big uh, just tank trucks, big tanker trucks, and on those trucks they have suction uh, hoses. And what, what, what happens is you'll get on a three-year rotation. I don't use the three-year rotation, I use the six-year rotation, but the company that comes out and that will service our system, they'll call us every three years and, and ask, do you want us to come out and service the, the system? And, and, and I'll say, no, let's, let's wait another three. Um, so I, I've never had a problem on a six-year rotation. It just it depends on what you want to do. It's not very expensive. It's it's two two hundred fifty three hundred dollars for them to come out and suck all the the solid waste out of here. 
old boy will just pull the hose over, pull the cap off, stick the hose down in there, turn on his pump, and he'll suck all the solid waste out of the bottom of the tank, and then it'll go into his truck, and off he goes. I mean, it, it, it doesn't take long, and it's real simple. So that's why these pipes are here. But um, that's, that's pretty much, much the nuts and bolts of a septic system. I'm going to go ahead and grab the camera, and we'll go down here and show you what the lagoon looks like. So that's it. Like I said, you know, it's more or less just a, a small pond and uh, the cattails over there I'll be spraying because you don't want those growing in there. Um, you can see all the, the dead weeds, you know, from last, last year. Um, I'll probably put a match to those and burn those off and then you can get in here with the, the push mower and push right down to the water line or use your string trimmer. I mean, there's, there's ways of keeping this all cleaned up and, and I will over time. But with that hot wire running around there, it was kind of a pain, you know, getting the string trimmer and the push mower in there. And it was more important to me to keep my dog out than it was to keep it trimmed up. But now that that dog's gone, I'm going to pull these pipes and uh, the T-posts and, and I'm going to start getting getting this all trimmed up, make it look a little nicer. But, so, you, you know, you can see that if you were to keep the maintenance up on it, it doesn't look too bad. And uh, again, you know, I can just look at this thing. I see the where the water line, the water level is, and I know everything's okay. So, this is Paul at Greenshire. I hope this helped out. If it did, please uh, subscribe. Give me a click on the like button. We'll see you next time at Greenshire. Thanks for watching.